Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to check out the fastest vampire build in Tamriel which also has unlimited resources, believe it or not. Timestamps in the description below and there's a written guide on AuxusHQ.com I've also put the link in the description. I also listed up how you actually can optimize like your walk sneak speed and your sprint speed so I listed up all the options pretty much so you can calculate it yourself if you want. The build originally was made to optimize resource node farming. So like when I tested this a while ago, I could make resources worth around 80 to 90k gold an hour. So just by farming resources and then selling that stuff later on, 90k gold. Pretty juicy. So how do we actually get to that speed cap? When we first off when you take a look at the map on the right side, you see that number 199 and 200%. That's the speed cap. If you go higher, it won't matter. 200% is the speed cap. And we, you can see, we reach that in stealth. So when we are, when we are hidden, AK sneak, and my resource bars don't move. They always stay at 100%. That's what makes this thing so beautiful. And even if we have to use shadowy disguise, our magicka fills up faster than we pretty much can use it. That's why I love this build so much. But how do we get there? The Steel Mundo Stone increases my movement speed by 15%. So you want to get this one. Very nice. Buff food wise, long thin pasty with melon sauce. You can get a hundred of these in the guild store for like 5000 gold. They're super cheap. And it's just nice because it boosts max stamina, health, and magicka. So go get that stuff. Potions. Use whatever floats your boat. It really doesn't matter. The race. Optimally, you want to be a Kashyyyk. Because they actually have a perk here that decreases your detection radius in stealth by 3 meters. Now what does that guy want? Okay, sure. Any race will work, don't worry too much about it. Now, Vampire. That's where it gets important and that's what pretty much Darkstalker is the most important perk. Ignore the movement speed, it's penalty of sneak. Now usually when you actually run around, you get the movement speed penalty in sneak. But when you're a Vampire, Darkstalker removes that. That's why we are so fast. You only need to be stage 1 for this. More than enough. You could use this setup on other classes as well. Then you might want to bump your vampire stage up to level 4. Because they have a nice new perk, unnatural movement. If you continuously sprint for 3 seconds, you automatically become invisible. So when you're a stage 4 vampire, you actually sprint for 3 seconds and poof, you're gone. I've showcased this a few times in my vampire showcase and so on, how that looks like. And for example, I use the Swarming Scion on back bar just in case I actually get into combat. I can become a vampire lord and just kill everything instantly, pretty much. The gear. That's where it becomes nice. So I have a setup with Ring of the Wild Hunt and I have one without Ring of the Wild Hunt. Let's first check out the setup without the mythic item. Jailbreaker. So this set gives us minor expedition at all times, increasing your movement speed by 10%. 10% is not really a lot, but it's nice to have and it's up all the time. You could technically use another set here if you don't want the extra 10% that boosts your damage or something like that. But with this here we can reach 200%. Monster set, I simply use Celine because it helps dealing damage in case you get in combat. You can use whatever you want. It doesn't matter what monster set you use. Now, the most important set is actually Darlock Bray. Because first off, the 4-piece bonus reduces the radius you can be detected while sneaking by 2 meters. So we have an even smaller detection radius, so we can pretty much like hug the enemy, pickpocket or whatever, they will not see us. 
no problem. And it also reduces the cost of sneak by 10%. Very nice. And now, the 5 piece bonus. While crouching and not blocking, you restore 670 magic and stamina every second. And that's why we have unlimited resources. Because we are in sneak, we always get 670 magic and stamina every one second. I do love balance in this game. So go get this one. You don't need gold gear. You can do this with blue gear, purple beer, gear, it doesn't matter. Did I just say beer? Yeah. Blue or purple gear, it doesn't matter. Gold one is just if you really want to min-max the stuff. So... You could technically front bar this only and use another set on the back bar, like a Maelstrom weapon or something like that, but it doesn't really matter too much. So what do we actually do? With this, let's first see, with this setup, when I run in sneak, we are at 170% speed. Now if I use a speed buff, we get to 200% again. So without the mythic item, you need major expedition to actually get to the cap. However, that's not really a problem. You can either use channeled acceleration, which comes from the Sitchik order, which gives you major expedition for 12 seconds. So we can activate this ability and we will not get out of stealth when we use this. So you see we are hidden all the time. If you don't have the Sitchik skill line and channeled acceleration, you can use the Alliance War Retreating Maneuver, which also gives you Major Expedition. However, when you activate this, you actually get out of stealth for a second. Did you see this? Detected. That's the only downside, and that's why I actually prefer to use channeled acceleration. With the Mythic item, however, so I just remove a ring, and I replace my monster set. Oh, sorry. I place the ring there and I use the Darlock Bre r shoulder piece. And now we don't have a full monster set, but it doesn't really matter that much. But we get Ring of the Wild Hunt. And we are at the speed cap again. We are actually a little bit over the speed cap. So you might not even need the swift stuff here with the Ring of the Wild Hunt. But it doesn't really matter that much. But now we don't need the Major Expedition, so we pretty much can save this one and use something else. That's why I love Ring of the Wild Hunt. It just makes you go super, super fast. How do you get this? I have an article on the website showcasing how to get this. You need to farm specific monsters in the Antiquity system to get that stuff. It's not like... It's not that hard to get, but you need to know where it drops. I will also put the link in the description. Now what traits do I use? I just use all divines. The divine increases my Mundustone effect, so the steel Mundustone gets buffed. Here, full medium, so seven medium pieces. Then, if you have... The normal setup without Ring of the Wild Hunt. You want full Swift. The Swift boosts your movement speed. Gold is 6%. Per piece, purple is 5 and blue is 4%. So if you have free Swift purple jewelry, you get 15% faster speed. Now when you have the Ring of the Wild Hunt, you don't really need this. Because you're already at the cap, pretty much. So just Ring of the Wild Hunt. And then you have, you can just use like Robust or whatever floats your boat. So you don't need to transmute everything. But even if you use the non-mythic item setup, again, you don't need to get to the 200%. Like 170, 180 in sneak is already fast enough. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The optimized setup, it's on the written guide. So you can just check it out there so you don't get anything wrong. That's it about the gear. I hope I could make you understand why Darlock Bray is pretty much the most important set here because of the unlimited resources and why Ring of the Wild Hunt is also nice. 
Maybe another thing, I use just weapon damage glyphs here because we don't really need more resources and an absorb stamina with a precise ox. Akbar bow can use precise infused, it doesn't really matter that much. So, champion points, because this is optimized for farming, you want to make sure you have enough points in here to get the plentiful harvest. So you have a 10% chance to gain double the yield from normal resource nodes. And Master Gatherer, so you actually farm the nodes faster. You just need to ox once and then you're done. There's a full champion point setup on the website too for 300, 600 and max CP. It's all there. This here is a pretty basic or standard setup that I usually use. Let's get to the skills because it's the last part of the puzzle pretty much. Now I don't know, if we have the Ring of the Wild Hunt, we can use Executability or something like that, doesn't really matter. What skills do I have? Rally. This is simply here to get the Major Brutality buff, which boosts our weapon damage a little bit. And it also heals when we activate it. Like when we reactivate it. Then Shadow Disguise, this is a Nightblade skill from the Shadow skill line. When we get detected, we can activate this, so we will be... So when I'm not stealthed and I use this, we will go hidden. For around 3 seconds. So you could use this to get away from fight. Killer's Blade, this is pretty much a flex but you can use whatever you want here. For example, Execute would not be bad. Then this is Swing, I simply like this because I can set enemies off balance and also knock them back pretty much, like stun them. You could use any other spammable, no problem. Concealed weapon, so that's another piece of the puzzle. When we are reading the last part of the text, while slotted, your movement speed while sneaking or invisible is increased by 25%. So you want to have this on the front bar. Because look, on the back bar, we are a little bit slower. We don't have the max speed cap anymore, but on the front bar we have it. Because this here gives another 25%. In cap strike, this is a nice ultimate, low cost, and it deals a lot of damage, and it also boosts your overall damage. And on the back bar, I have Swarming Scion. I like to use this in case of emergency because it boosts my health, magic, and stamina by 10%, and it heals me for 15% of my overall damage done. Then I have Vigor. If I'm in combat, this is my main heal. Phantasmal Escape. This is a nice thing to have because it gives you major evasion, so it reduces your damage, AOE, AOE damage by 25% pretty much. Poison Injection, nice damage over time effect that you can place on the enemy. Relentless Focus, so you could use the Spectral Bow proc if you want it, and Endless Hail, uh, Arrow Barrage for AOE damage if you're in combat. So this build also can dish out quite a bit of damage if you really want to, but like I just mentioned, the sets and just the whole setup is optimized for like staying in sneak pretty much all the time and if you want to get away you can get away that's pretty much the most important things so just to summarize again before we check out the outfit how do we get to the 200 percent the steed mundo stone is 15 percent then you want to not forget the Dark Stalker passive to reduce the movement speed penalty or remove it pretty much in sneak. Helps a lot. Then we have Jailbreaker which gives us 10%. We have Ring of the Wild Hunt if we really need it. We have Swift Trade on Jewelries. Now if you have the Ring of the Wild Hunt you don't really need Swift because you're pretty much already at the cap. But if you use the normal... Darlock Brace setup, then you want Swift to reach the cap. The Darlock set is nice because it gives us unlimited resources, and that's where it is like sparkly. You're basically a Christmas tree. Next up, we have Concealed Weapon, which gives us another 25% faster speed. There's also a perk, I'm not even sure if I'm using it. Uh, let's see. Wind running, yeah, it's active. Increases your movement speed and mounted speed by 2%. So that's another thing that could help. 
there we go and then if you don't have ring of the wild hunt you can either use channeled acceleration to get the speed buff or retreating maneuver to get to the 100% uh, to the 200% cap now let's take a look at the outfit the pieces i use is jeffrey and paladin helm then the paul drones xifkin bracers jeffrey and paladin greaves we have stacks of Zen Maul, Jeffrey and Paladin Kuras, the girdle and the Yakutan boots. The colors, it's all Black Reach blue pretty much. If you have any more questions, you can always catch me on twitch.tv slash alcushq or in our community Discord. If you have any questions, you can always ask there as well in the Furycraft section or wherever you want. Links in the description as well. You can watch a few other videos here. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that juicy like button. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Cheers.